We appreciate you listening to American Medicine today. I'm Kimberly Bonatti, joined by Ethan Euchre. Glad to be here. Yes, Jeff Wagstaff. Hello, everyone. And world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti. Hello. Joining us is Rosemary Musso. She's the author of The Four Laws of Forgiveness, Memories of Survival During World War II Nazi Germany. Thank you so much for being here, Rosemary. Thank you for having me. You were very young at the time, obviously, Rosemary. Tell us what it was like growing up in Nazi Germany. Everybody knows that war always brings torment. And during World War II, I was about five years old. By the time I was six years old, I had experienced the horrors of war. For example, we went to a period of starvation. The bombings and screeching sirens brought a lot of fear constantly. A bomb passed over our home and ended up in the backyard. (laughs) And we were eight children and we were all in our basement. But God protected us. And none of us was hurt. And Rosemary, uh, your father was a dentist, correct? And for the record, um, your family wasn't a Jewish family, but uh, the Nazis would bring the Jews to your father. Take it from there. Tell us what that was all about. The Nazis would um, take the Jews out of concentration camps and then made them do forced labor in a coal mine close by our village. The Nazis would pick up the Jews, put them on a truck, and they brought the Jews to my father to his dental office, which was in our home. When the Jews arrived, the Nazis demanded from my father that he pull all their teeth because from malnutrition, their teeth were rotting and they had gum disease, scurvy. And so that's why they told my father to pull all their teeth. But he was forbidden to give them any anesthetic. Because they wanted them to suffer as much as possible. That's exactly right. As a child, you don't understand this. In front of the Jews, my father would show disdain for the Jews and told him, told them, get in my basement. I don't have room for you up here. You nasty, dirty Jews. I'll call you when I can. And the Nazis were very satisfied, thinking he really hated the Jews and they would leave the Jews with my father for several hours. However, once the Jews came in our basement, my father had someone there to medicate them and feed them and make them comfortable for several hours until the Nazis picked them back up. What was it like as a young girl watching your father? I mean, did you as a child understand why in front of the Nazis he would put on his best game face and try to demoralize them. And then once they were gone, offer as much help as he could to them. Were you able to understand that? Yes. My father talked to us about it because we were also taught not to speak to people because our whole family was under surveillance because it was known that my father was helping the Jews as well as war prisoners. So we were very well aware of what was going on. And as a child, you don't understand it. You just get into a lot of fear. What I find fascinating is obviously you're in Germany, occupied by the Nazis, of course. Uh, well, it's, it's Germany. So they were in power. And uh, while your family weren't Jewish, as Kimberly said, your dad was tasked with this terrible uh, deed of removing these teeth. Now, uh, he put on a good front to let the Nazis think that he was against the Jews as well, but then turned around and showed them compassion. What happened when the Nazis caught wind that your father was actually sort of an accomplice in helping them? He even helped one or more of them escape, I think I remember you telling me. He helped a Jewish professor. He helped him escape to France. And this professor and the Bishop of Paris actually both came to visit my father after the war was over to thank him for saving their lives. After the Nazis found out what my father was doing, Nazi officer came by his office and handed him a summons to be executed in Danzig. Now, we were eight children. Of course, my parents were petrified. My father had a patient who was a baroness who lived in a huge castle close by our home, and she was very influential. So my father went to the castle and showed the baroness the summons he received to be executed and asked her for her help. 
within hours, she called a good friend of hers who was a high-ranking general at Hitler's headquarters, and she told him she had a certain gum disease. My father was the only dentist she found in Germany to be able to help her. She asked the general, as a personal favor to her, not to execute him. And that was really God's intervention. Hours later, orders were issued from Berlin to Hanau not to execute my father. Wow. But the Nazis didn't stop there. Shortly before the war was over, the Nazis were going to hang our whole family. And on the day of we were supposed to be hung, the American troops took over in our village. And the patients for my father, a lot of them ran towards the troops and asked them to come to our house to help us because we were about to be hung. The army with tanks and everything, they immediately, without hesitation, came to our house and saved our lives just hours before our hanging. That oh is my goodness. just incredible. You had to have been filled with such anger and hatred towards the Nazis and Hitler. Like, how, how did you cope? Well, mainly we were taught and actually forbidden to show any kind of emotions. We were not allowed to speak to anyone or cry too loud or laugh too loud. We had to keep our emotions in check for a long time. So when I got older, I kept all this inside. And I was on the outside. People told me that I was the coldest person they had ever met. Oh, my God. And But that was because I was able to not show emotions. I to protect yourself. I was trained like that as a child. And yes, I did hate Hitler. And God made me forgive him. That was one of the hardest things I ever did to forgive Hitler. And I hated my father as well because he was so strict as a child, not understanding that he had to be strict in order to save our lives. From your perspective and from your memory as a young child, we can't imagine, can't fathom what could make an entire country turn against a race of people from your memory, what were those soldiers like? What was their demeanor like? I just can't You're imagine. About the Nazis? Yeah, I can't imagine the hatred and the vile and the nastiness that came from them. But you, you're the only person I've ever spoken to who, who's met them, who interacted with them. From your perspective, what were your memories well, of those Hitler's, men? Hitler's theme was to be brutal. And the Nazis, of course, followed his command. We were scared when they came in searching our house for anything they may be able to find with their machine guns. They were cold as stone and followed their leader, Hitler, to be brutal. This is why we had so much fear and anxiety. There was one bomb that passed over our house and ended up in the backyard, but the same thing happened in our village, so it was scary to even go for a walk. Your story is the very reason why people say never forget. Just to summarize everything, because there's way more we could have got into outside of that, and including how you came to the United States, uh, you became a paralegal, you learned the language, you went to law school and became passed the bar and became a lawyer at, I believe, 56 or 58. You're almost 80 now. You're still a practicing lawyer. Talk and you and your whole book is about learning forgiveness uh, within yourself. So right. it, it's a fantastic message. And Any parting words for our listeners? Well, forgiveness is the most important thing because if you don't forgive, you're holding yourself as prisoner and you bind that other person actually to yourself and you have to release that person to God so God can deal with them. If you hold a person prisoner to your own judgment, then God will not deal with that person and you get bitter and angry. And when I forgave Hitler and my father, suddenly this supernatural love just filled my soul. And it's very important. I went back to school, got my associate's degree, bachelor's degree, finished law school, uh, passed the bar to become an attorney. That was my dream. God bless you from the bottom of our hearts. I can't even imagine growing up in that sort of a scenario. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for taking the time to share your story. Rosemary Musso, 
who witnessed this firsthand. She's the author of Four Laws of Forgiveness, Memories of Survival During World War II, Nazi Germany. Thank you for being on the program. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you.